Hello YouTube, Salivate Metal here, showcasing some coins that are purchased within the periods of the late 1990s and early 2000s. And as you can see, the prices are vastly different then than they are today, even with the recent dips and lower costs that we're seeing now for precious metals. And this video is to encourage gold and especially silver stackers to press on and continue buying because I don't think you're, gonna, you're going to ever see prices like this ever again and I'll explain later in the video why. But as you can see the prices are very low and at a time when wages were much higher, especially for me, they, they were higher then so I was able to purchase more. Um, but today you're seeing wages are much less and prices are much higher all around. Nonetheless, these coins, it wouldn't, it wasn't as much of a big deal to buy a one ounce gold coin as it is today. I remember specifically at work getting a one ounce gold Philharmonic and having it delivered to my workplace and taking it in with me to a staff meeting, holding it in my pocket knowing that it was there and that it wasn't as big a deal to make that purchase. Now I have great, uh, appreciation for these coins and I look at them to remind myself of how much it's appreciated from back then as to where it is now. I'll take a closer look at some of these. This is a 1.117 ounce 5 pound Great Britain gold coin from the year 2000. So it's over an ounce and uh, and you can see the price on it, 499 Just a beautiful coin. And uh, here's, here is, I'm not sure the, the weight, but I'm sure it's very close to an ounce. Probably more than three quarters of an ounce. It's a, it's a coin from Israel. And there's other coins here that, uh, like this panda, this 1991 ounce panda. $430, one ounce pure gold. Beautiful coin. That was when it was starting to make a steady climb upwards. For one ounce of gold there. And here is the most shocking. $350 for a numismatic piece. A St. Gaudens, not quite an ounce, but and the coin is not in the best of shapes. I don't have a really good example of a of a St. Gaudens other than my slabbed one, which is in an off stored off site as these are. I've pulled them out for this video specifically, but as you can see, beautiful coin, $350. Considered one of the most beautiful coins of St. Gaudens. There's the motto, In God We Trust, United States of, of America, $20. And here we have American Prospector for $8.50. For this particular coin dealer, I'll explain to you how I acquired my silver and gold back then. I bought from one or two guys. I'm very lucky. In the small town in which I live, there are several coin dealers much more than for the rate of population. And here is another one. This is a from the the Liberty Dollar NORFED, the National Organization for the, for the Reformation of the uh, Federal Reserve Act for the repeal of the Res uh, Res Federal Reserve Act. And he never made coins any higher than the denomination. He, he always had a comfortable realm. So this was back when silver was below $10 an ounce so that he could make a profit on it. He hated the dollar, but yet used it on his coins, and that's what got him in trouble, because he marked them as coins. And here's a $26 dos y media pesos, that's two and a half pesos. I'm sure that's about two and a half, I think it's over two grams. You won't find that kind of deal a day. When I was at a recent coin show, it was, um, it was um, much more than that. It was like $50. Anyways, there was no internet to speak of to buy bullion back then, and the shipping just wasn't worth it because the cost to ship things was not much less than it is today. So you pay a higher premium. So I would always go to the, my local coin dealers and buy silver and gold and get it pretty close to spot, sometimes right at spot. Now this, that coin there, the other one, just so as an example, I paid twenty-five dollars for that at Baltimore last week, and the other one I paid seven fifty. So, 
And so the question is, why will we not see these prices ever again? To me, the answer is very clear. It is because of this building, this building that you see before you, for it is the Federal Reserve Building in Washington, D.C. And it is from that building where policies are made to devalue the dollar in what they call quantitative easing, where they print more money, causing its purchasing power to decrease greatly. And it has happened a lot in recent years. And it's a shame because that money has nothing to back it up with. Nothing but the promise of those bankers and politicians that make those policies. They can only do that for so long. But we know that for thousands of years, gold and silver has been a thing of value and has been used for money. Even governments today know that. A multitude of gratitude to you all for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.